Hey everyone, Maskell here. And Mama, welcome to our podcast. Today we're covering the Netflix anime, The Adventures of Sinbad. In this prequel series to Magi, The Kingdom of Magic, young Warren Sinbad sets himself on the path to his destiny, encountering both friends and foes, and changing the world on its way. Now, before we start, be sure to like, subscribe, and click the notification bell to get updates on future podcasts and we'll want to pause video. The thing I was happiest about for this prequel is that Matthew Mercer is still Sinbad! Yes! And I wouldn't see a reason to change him out because he spit the character. Uh, absolutely, but we know what happens, but it didn't happen for this one, so I am ecstatic and happy, and I was satisfied. Right. <laughs> so... So for here, as we said, this is a prequel to the Magi series, which we have covered already. So if you want to go see that, you can check out our other podcast. Yes, and if you haven't seen Magi and the Labor of the Magic, you really should watch it. It's a really fun, um, outstanding series that really doesn't get enough attention. Right. But before we start talking about it, let's give a shout out to the voice cast. Okay. Because there's some really great people that you know. Besides Matthew Mercer, you've got Ryan Bartley, Robbie Damon, Lucian Dodge, and Patrick Saints, uh, Wendy Lee, Cal Hebert, Grant George, uh, Erica Lindbeck, so, and David Vincent. Man, really. if I didn't say Max Middleman, Max Middleman. So you've got a lot of people in here that you will be familiar with and you will recognize as soon as you hear their voices. So we wanted to give a shout out to them first because I keep saying Matthew Mercer, but he is not the one, only one who stars right. in here. And it's, a, it's an excellent cast. Everyone did an outstanding job um, voicing their characters. Yes. And so for here, um, in case you didn't know, um, there's a character in Magi named Sinbad. Because this, uh, for the Magi universe, it's a sort of like a crossover of all of these um, public domain stories that take place in the in the East. And they have them all together in one universe. And then Sinbad, uh, we had heard in the Magi series, he had all these adventures and he became his ruler. So this series is adapting a prequel manga, just like for Magi that shows his adventures, how he was left to be the king. And they did a fantastic job of answering all of the questions you had about characters and meetings and different things. It's the first series ever we've seen like that there's a prequel and answers every question you had when you were watching the original series. So they did a fantastic job at that. Right. Yeah. And we kind of put off watching this for a long time because the first time we saw we didn't know what it was because we didn't see Magi. And it's also because we have so many other things that we're watching. We kept saying we gotta find time and finally Rascal said Sinbad. We're gonna watch Sinbad now. Okay. Right. <laughs> and for here, like, it was pretty interesting to see how this story played out. It was only like maybe 12 or 13 episodes in the whole season. And I don't think they'll make another one because um, this came out back in 2016 wow. and it's been uh, four or five years. Four years. Yeah, four or five years. And four. Th yes. It, yeah, it's it's been that long. <laughs> and they, yeah, and... For here, it looks like there isn't going to be a season two. There's been no announcement. They haven't said anything. I think they guess they're just going to leave as is. You answer the remaining exactly. questions, so they don't need to right. keep going with more stuff. I guess like what you found out was enough. And again, they did it so well. There were no questions left to answer. You learned how he met everyone. You learned how he got on the path to his destiny. You learned who his parents were, what happened to them. Mm -hmm. You everything you really wanted to know about this character. And how he met up with, again, how he ended up on the path to meeting Aladdin and Alibaba and Morgiana. Mm -hmm. All the questions were answered. Mm -hmm. It was like a neat little Christmas, a neat little holiday package all wrapped up. Right. And given to you. Right. Now, it started off kind of rocky because yeah. he had a really violent, kind of depressing start mm -hmm. to the story with his, his mom and his dad. Yes. And maybe that was to drive in the point that the country at that at that point in time the state of it was really messed up i mean right. like you said it was constant violence constant fighting there were people being sent out to war they were just sending out people they didn't like it wasn't even about like having soldiers to fight for the country right. they just sent them out they don't like them they sent them off to ask them off and Sindad's father was a former soldier mm -hmm. and he had been injured in battle and you knew he was injured to some point because he had a leg missing but when his robe came off you really saw just how badly injured he was. Mm -hmm. And then, as you said, because they didn't like him, because he was positive and he helped people and all these other things, and he got in trouble helping someone who really was a spy. 
and um, they didn't know it. The family didn't know right. it. So they get angry and they send him off. And they knew he couldn't fight. He had one leg and all these injuries, but they did it anyway. Mm -hmm. And of course, we never see his dad again. Right. So you knew what happened at that point. But they also uh, set up of how he goes on the adventures, how he starts capturing the dungeons. He gets his little crew. He even gets you even get to meet Jafar, who was a lot younger than we expected when we saw the show. Yes. And one thing that was really interesting is the the desire to do these things was there, but the adventure part was placed in his head by the actual spy who would tell him all these magnificent stories and he was a little boy who said, I'm a real man. <laughs> but it was so funny because, you know, the guy was a spy and he didn't care what happened, but he, for whatever reason, he took the time, I guess because it was his destiny, to lay, when they, before they went to sleep at night, he would lay um, next to him because they slept on the same cot. And he would tell him these stories of adventure and things that were out there and places he'd never seen or dreamed of. And that built up in him over the short time he was there. I want to see these things. And he told him, but what about the stories you told me? Lies, all lies. They weren't. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and he still, you know, when he got older, I want to see these adventure, adventures. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. He told me these things. They can't all be lies. I want to see him. Right. And after um, some time passes and he, he becomes a teen, he sets out on his own to do them. Right. And I well, also want to point out there's actually something hilarious. They, they do keep in the themes of comedy in here. But you can tell there's actually a major difference in how the show is written. Not just because it's about Sinbad and not Aladdin and Alibaba. But one is that in terms of its delivery on events and animation. Because there were multiple points in there where Magi and anime itself was over having very elaborate anime scenes and fight scenes and showing you everything. Unless, of course, they're working on something at the same time and there's like time constraints so they cut down and it's understandable because they're working on multiple projects. But for seems like for the Sinbad series, they did not animate nearly as much as Magi. The action. Right. There was like, there was supposed to be action, but the action was either very quick or they would use frame by frame by frame. There was even a point in there we couldn't help laughing where they had a flashback between a brother and a sister. Yes. And it was a wall. A <laughs> blank wall. And you heard the best kids in the background. And then the flashback's over and they said, what was that? I, said, I guess you use your imagination to find your out. Illusion. Yeah, like, what's the flashback? Is this silent? Where's the flashback? There's nothing there. Then when they have the action, it's one shot, yes. one shot, yes. one shot, we're done. One shot, we're done. The fights don't last multiple episodes like in the regular show. They seem to be more focused on the beauty of the animation because it's just as colorful and beautiful and That's vibrant true. as Maggi was. And fan service, which came along later on. Yeah. I think for this, what was another part of this um, prequel that was great is when you were watching Maggi and you really didn't know Sinbad and he was just this really nice guy and he kept saying, you know, he's he joined seven kingdoms and he just wants to you know, have people live in peace, and you kind of wondered, was he real? Because you didn't know if he was going to be made out to be an enemy in here. You want to yeah, show about there's the so many characters like but that. But this prequel lets you know that his his desire for that was pure and genuine his entire life. That's all he thought about was the adventure and his kingdom coming from under tyrannical rule. Mm -hmm and for the different kingdoms to be joined in agreements and peace. And that was his desire from the beginning. And you got to see how, as you said, his entourage, he gathered his entourage and they were, you know, they were so um, impressed by his dedication, his determination to see this come. And it was like, you know, I believe you can do it. If anyone can do it, you can do it. And we also get to see him in this version go to the dungeons and get not one but two metal vessels right. that help him to secure his place as king. Yes, and that's where he thought a lot of the action was, but it was more <laughs> into uh, that's where he was more into the detail on why he got it. Mm -hmm. They did make up for it by showing you, okay, this is why he deserves both of these dungeons. This is why he earned it. Mm -hmm. He really did earn it because of his goals and his plans. As you can see in the Magi series, he succeeds, so it wasn't just something that would fade. 
And there was also a point where they actually had a really cool idea where he needed to get money to build his places, fix the bowls, buy food and everything because it starts off by being a merchant. The merchant is supposed to be like the greatest merchant of all time. Mm -hmm. And so one of the, the people that helps him, we won't reveal who because it does link to the Maggi series. It says, you talk about your adventures and people are just entranced by them. Make them into a show. So he kind of does like Ember Island Players and he turns his adventures into big performances. And they're so grand that you never see them. <laughs> you never you see, see the light it. show. Yeah, you see, you see fireworks, show. and he's on the stage, and they said, "Wow, that was great." You do that was great. Right. Just, it just they didn't want to animate the 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 story and anything. They use flashbacks, but they'll never use new animation. Not even used in an episode prior. So unfortunately, what would probably one of the coolest parts seeing the elaborate thing come to life on stage. They completely skipped over. They just explained what happened or just said, oh, that was great. It's like, what was? I didn't see it. Exactly. And meeting his entourage, we got to see Jafar and his backstory. And that was one of the biggest surprises because usually Jafar is a villain in every other version you've seen. He was, of course, not a villain in Magi, uh, the... Um, in the labor of Magi, I'll just say that. And he wasn't a villain in here. He was in the beginning, but you learn how he got to escape that life and you learn how he met his entire entourage that helps him in the labyrinth series right and how he met them and how they followed him and it was fun uh, uh, you know it was a lot of fun during that part and as you said you know there was a lot of animation that wasn't done was use your illusion but right. still it was fun and it was great to see how he and Jafar became you know, so connected and such best friends and how Jafar became loyal to him and trusted him. Right. And uh, we don't want to spoil any of that for you, telling you any of that. Right, because it's still our story. And those individual stories are fantastic. Again, they did a, just a wonderful job on this prequel. The worst two parts, we have to say, not the worst two parts, but if it had to be anything that we say that didn't work is one, not animating everything. I would guess that's how Netflix probably fixed you know, staying in their budget. Yeah, right? yeah. I think that's why I took short because it says that a Netflix budget isn't that much different from a TV budget. So they actually do less on a Netflix one. So that's why there's mostly talking. There's not a lot of action anime on this network. And then the other thing would be, and you guys will know because you're going to see it, you know, he lost his dad and he eventually loses his mom before he sets out. She gets sick and she dies. And those are the things that we didn't care for. That, of course, he lost both his parents and that they didn't animate the action scenes and other things we wanted to see. Now, think about it. Those are some really small things not to like about an anime. There's so much more that could have been disliked, but again, it's fantastic. It's one of the best. Based on that, I would give this an 8.5 out of 10, only because of the two things we mentioned. Mm -hmm. If they had let the parents live, or at least one parent live, and done more animation, I would absolutely give this a 10 out of 10. But mm -hmm. only because of that, I give it eight and a half stars out of ten. It's fantastic, and if you haven't seen it, it's still on Netflix. Take the time and watch it. You can even binge watch it with only twelve episodes. Yeah, you could probably finish that in a day. Yes, and that's what we should have done, but we didn't. No, but it was wonderful nevertheless. So, if you've seen um, Magi, The Adventures of Sinbad. Let us know what you think in the comments below, especially if you saw it when it originally aired in 2016. Mm -hmm. What did you think? Were you excited to see it as a prequel because you had all these unanswered questions in Magi and the, uh, the Labyrinth? Imagine as we yeah. did. Yeah. Oh, and be sure to like, subscribe, and click the notification bell to get updates in future podcasts and multiple pause videos. Yes. So thank you so much for watching. I'm Raskin Entertainment. And I'm Mom Entertainment. Have a fantastic day. Peace. Rivers and streams, plucking sunlight from the sky in my pocket, giving